This is another case. 1.5 month old girl to our OPD just for checkup or of her ventricular megaly, noted before birth by fetal sonogram. Her mother feels okay about her. Excessive startle responses were mentioned though. A history taking and physical neurological exam were unremarkable, but a large head. Her head circumference was 40 centimeter. For her age, that was above 97th percentile. An OPD sonogram, brain sonogram was done, and something unusual over right side was found. Admission for further confirmation was suggested. This was her EEG, a very pathological pattern. Suppression burst. Suppression burst. This is her exclusive EEG picture. A brain MI was done and hemimegalencephaly was found over right side with right ventricular megaly. While she stayed in hospital, we noticed that the startle responses were actually tonic spasms. A suppression burst pattern is very pathological at any age. It also a distinctive pattern for two neonatal epilepsy syndromes, EIEE, early infantile of epileptic encephalopathy, and EME, early micronic epilepsy, encephalopathy. It consists of high voltage bursts, 150 to 300 microvolt of spikes or short and slow waves, lasting usually for one to three seconds with interburst intervals of three to five seconds. So this girl was diagnosed as EIEE, aka Otahala syndrome, in memory of Dr. Otahala. A high percentage of the etiology is due to structural anomaly. This term, epilepsy syndrome, is a unique epileptic condition with a cluster of signs and symptoms customarily occurring together, including seizure type, sex, age of onset, EEG features, etiology, interictal conditions, precipitating factors, AED response, severity, chronicity, and sometimes prognosis. This is an illustration of electroclinical syndromes organized by typical age at onset proposed by ILOAE in 2010. Onset age at, at neonate infancy, childhood, adolescence to adult, and variable onset age. We focus on the neonate and the infancy as today's topic. There seems to have a dichotomy with regard to outcome at this age, benign and severe, benign neonatal, benign infantile. Usually, the interictal EEGs are non-specific or normal with favorable outcome. On the other, on, on the other hand, the severe ones like EIEE, EME, West syndrome, Dravet syndrome, epilepsy of infancy with migrating focal seizures, poor seizure control with developmental delay is always the rule. Two well-known pathological EEG patterns are suppression burst in EIEE or EME, as we have mentioned, and his hips arrhythmia in West syndrome. We will talk about it later. 
This is another example. A 1.5 month old girl, quite okay before, started to have right chronic seizures and tonic spasms, a burst suppression pattern, yet confined to the left side and the vertex area, kind of a modified picture. Burst suppression, burst suppression in left side. Brain MRI disclosed the diffuse thick cortex over the left brain. At first, the seizures were under control by medications, but onset of status at the age of one year. This MRI was done at age of one year and three months. More obvious of the thick cortex as a better grade. Why meta differentiation is developed? She underwent a left vertical parasomic his his hemispherectomy at the age of one year six months, and the pathology was focal cortical dysplasia, type two B. She is seizure free ever since. With great improvement in her neural development, another pathological EEG pattern is hypsarrhythmia. You may be more familiar with. Hips means high or low T. It has a very disorganized background with high voltage, irregular slow waves, intermixed with multifocal spikes and poly spikes. Asymmetry and other patterns of modified hypsarrhythmia occurred in one third of cases. The following EEGs are from a seven-month-old boy who started to have epileptic spasm. He had a remote head injury at the age of three months. The voltage was too high, so we have to lower the sensitivity to thirty. Microvolt per millimeter. They were multifocal spikes in right and left brains. If we up the sensitivity to ten, you can see this chaotic picture. Another page in sensitivity of twenty. This is West syndrome with the etiology of a remote four months ago. Brain injury. At last, we are going to the non-epileptic EEG abnormalities, which are in conditions other than epilepsy. Yet, remember, at this age, we already mentioned abnormal background, both focal or generalized, is highly associated with seizures. They may be sustained or paroxysmal. Usually, the patterns are non-specific. However, some may be more specific, like as comb-like rhythm in MSUD, triphasic waves in Angelman syndrome. They can provide clues for clinical diagnosis. Here we show the last case. A seven-month-old boy with epileptic spasm. He underwent a detailed study, including brain MRI and inborn errors of metabolism, at another hospital before our service. The results were non-conclusive. These were the EEGs, a typical pattern of hypsarrhythmia. Hypsarrhythmia sensitivity of twenty. So, this is a case of West syndrome with unknown etiology. Floppiness and developmental delay are very evident. At age of eleven months, we follow an EEG and saw this. It looks like a normal awake EEG. With eyes closed, beautiful PDR at 
alpha range of around 8 hertz but he was only 11 months old and he was in sleep very monotonous throughout the whole recording we wait until he was one year and six months a follow-up brain MRI so we can saw the diffuse thick cortex this is listen separately the high amplitude Fast activity is one of the three EEG characteristics of lysencephaly. A non-epileptic form finding leads us to a more specific etiology. Finally, we concluded this talk. Both normal and abnormal EEG patterns at this young age are unique and different. An appreciation of the age-dependent characteristics is of importance. The correlation of electrical seizure activity with the occurrence of clinical seizures in neonatal period is critical. Interictal EEG features are closely with regard to background activity and focal epileptiform discharges. Non-epileptiform EEG abnormalities are non-specific and often associate with seizures, epilepsies. However, there are some more unique EEG features that help us toward a more specific etiology. Clinical features are also unique and different at this age population. Optimal use of the EEG in the diagnosis and outcome prediction is valuable. Thank you, thank you for your listening.